You can leave it a little bit. Yeah, that's right. So, Brother Cobb, I want to ask you about something because you said you had an, a, a, a thing, um, a rich area upstate upstate New York, and uh, the guy told you that, we're, we're, well, you're an educator, but just, just repeat that story where, where, where the cat was telling you. You don't have to mention any names or whatever. Have you? Well, um, it, it, it was in Westchester County, which is just north of where I yeah. live mm -hmm. and where I worked. And it was an educational conference, but it dealt with learning styles. Mm -hmm. And this community that invited me to speak, uh, the great majority of them were affluent and they were of European descent. Mm -hmm. Teachers, parents, people interested. And, and in this group, there was uh, a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me after my presentation because I was talking about the difference between achievement gap and opportunity gaps. And I was saying that, you know, you can't judge a person by their culture in terms of how intelligent they are. Mm -hmm. And so he came up to and he told me a story. You know, he, he, he told me that um, there are parents that come to him before tests and they have their children evaluated and they are classified, certified special ed. So especially like, like you know, like, like, like I don't want to say they're dumb, but I mean... No, they're not dumb, but there are different forms of, of special ed. I mean, I've taught every type of special ed. You, you, you have children uh, who are emotionally challenged. In fact, I call special ed other gifted because what mm -hmm. I've found in special ed is that most children who do not learn according to the conventional style have a very interesting and unique way of learning. Sometimes... Um, it's rather genius. Like, for instance, um, that 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 show a, a, Aquila and the Bee, when she was in that spelling bee and she would pat herself. Well, she's a rhythmic learner. Mm, mm, that mm. that as she pats herself, that's how she remembers. Mm, mm, mm. There there are various ways that you assimilate information, and then you bring it back. For instance, in testing. And um, so I've 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 always had my own view towards what I call special ed. However. You, you, you can be physically challenged, you can be emotionally challenged, you can be spiritually challenged. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways that you can be challenged. And, you know, there are different varying degrees. Like, for instance, when I first started teaching, I was a gym teacher. And I had a student, I had a student that, that, that had a, a physical challenge. Mm -hmm. one, one, his, he, he had an arm that was very short. Mm -hmm. I had another young lady that was her leg. She, she had challenges with her leg. And so it was my responsibility. This was 79, uh, the beginnings of the really focus on the public law, mm -hmm. spe uh, special education. And I developed a, 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 a phys ed class that, for instance, she could be a referee. Mm. And she could also participate with things that had to do with the hands. Whereas the young man that had a challenge with his hand, he could run races. He could do a lot. But so wherever their area of challenge was, I was able to develop a curriculum that allowed them to participate like all the other children, but participate in the way that they are best suited. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's special ed to me. Okay. Now, with that comes certain um, guarantees. For instance... Um, if you, um, if, if you are, um, challenged, let's say, uh, academically, then you can, um, take longer for the test. Hmm. Like they give you time and a half. Okay. So for instance, if you have a three hour test, you get the three hours mm -hmm. plus an hour and a half, four and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And so what this uh, psychiatrist told me is that he uh, would certify their children's special education. And they would go to Kaplan's and Sylvan's and all the other opportunities that rich people have. Well, I mean, they would pay, the rich people would pay for themselves? Or $1,500. But the school was paying no, for No, 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 it's private. They, they would pay. Okay. $1,500. $1,200, which was uh, the beginning fee to certify them, and then 300 to come back to decertify them. Mm 
because... Wait, 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 what do you mean decertified? It means that he would take them off to special ed. They would only be in special ed for about two months. Mm -hmm. Psychiatrists would certify them special ed. Mm -hmm. That would give them an four and a half hours for the SAT. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay. The college board exams. Whereas our children, who may not have Sylvans, may not have Kaplans and all the other help that communities have that have money, they sit for three hours and take a test. Whereas the rich, who they're not wrong with them, they get extra time. Uh, when they when finish their test, it's done, they now go back to the psychiatrist for another interview. He declassifies, declassifies them and decertifies them special ed. They go back into general education and then they go to Harvard or to Yale or to any of the other schools. Uh, not to mention if their parents paid. Okay. To get them in, it's called gaming the system. But let me ask you something: If I don't want to say, I don't want to say. Well, if those kind of folks go to Harvard and Yale, remember they're still they're uh, what do you call it? they're networking. That's what that's what university is about. But now uh, I don't, I can't say the delicate way. But those people then become your 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 leaders, your your, your politicians, your lawyers, or whatever have you. But it's, does that mean there's a whole? class, almost a whole generation, so a couple of generations of people that are not as bright as we think that they are, and they're actually, that that's maybe that's the problem that we're in right now. We have not so bright people that, that go to these colleges that uh, are basically uh, make the policies that, that continue to, to, to oppress us. Yes, and also a college education really doesn't make you intelligent. That's the other problem. They may go to the college, but I don't really have a lot of... Um, positive thoughts about what I, because I've taught college, you know, and I've, I've had, uh, not to say there are not phenomenal educators. I don't speak in absolutes. There's some phenomenal people that have really done great work for students and they care. And that goes in all subject areas. So I want to be very clear with how I'm approaching this conversation because I'm not speaking in absolutes. Mm -hmm. But I do not think the way in which the educational system is set up in the world that we're living in is conducive to developing a well-rounded, intelligent child. But I am saying that some of their life's experiences make them intelligent. Mm -hmm. And so I have met people who have not gone to college and I sit down and take out a pen and paper and take notes when they talk. Mm -hmm. There are other people I know have double and triple doctorates that I don't understand a thing they're saying. Mm -hmm. And so education means to draw out, educe or to educare, to, to draw out. And so I come from a perspective, a, 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 an intellectual concept that each and every human is born Oops. with every bit of information that they will ever have. Mm. And that what an educator does, what I do is I educe or I draw out of them their awareness that they already know it. Because how could I teach somebody something that wasn't in their head in the first place? Well, now you're in my, now you're in my, I have that same thing. I call it, I call it, uh, putting putting people in a situation where they can release their own magnificence. And this comes as a reaction to all this word, this word that I hate, which is empowerment, which basically, well, it's the academic word, they, they want to posit something. In other words, they don't say they're going to pour something into you or give you something from the outside. And that's why. I, yeah, well, I, I use the word in power, mm -hmm. not empower, but mm -hmm. in power, you empower yourself. Well, it define which which means that you come from within, you draw out and present mm -hmm. who you are and what you know, in what area it is that you're speaking. Very powerful experience. And one of the things, oh, Mr. Evan? but that wasn't the New Jersey. Okay, uh, but but that's not one of the things that to me becomes most important. Mm -hmm. You know what's what's most important to me is for each and every individual to find their passion. Find that gift that you've been given. Everybody's been given a gift. And what, what I've attempted to do with children and even my own biological children is to assist them in finding that gift, whatever it may be, in whatever. I never um, tried to make my children into something that they may not have been able or want to be. You be you. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, be best. Okay, thank you for that.